A model steam engine test plant. This is part 7, how to make the upper part of the special live steam injector water tank. It is a simple job but it needs to be built correctly. In the video I do show some parts of the job that could go wrong. Here are the components for the entire tank, but I'm only going to show the making of the upper tank in this episode. All of the copper and brass parts are going to be soft soldered together, not silver soldered. The reason for this is simple, there's less cleanup required after soft soldering than silver soldering. In this clip, with the tank on the base, I'm just drawing round the tank. This part will need to be turned smaller than it is to fit inside the tank. Now it's over to the bandsaw to initially cut it out. You need to cut as close to the line as possible. And the first thing to do really is to lower the guide for the blade so it doesn't wander about as much. There is, however, quite a lot of tolerance on this component because eventually, when it's machined, it will fit inside the tank. As I drew this line around the outside of the tank, it's a bit oversized. But I will eventually machine it to the size I need it to be to fit inside the tank. I'm doing it this way on the bandsaw to remove excess material to make the turning operation a lot simpler. The job is completed in no time at all because the video is running at 400% as usual. I always like to increase the speed of routine jobs so they don't get too tedious. That's the job done, I'm just releasing the part from the bandsaw. As you can see, it's not perfectly on the line. I don't need it to be perfect, but I would like it to be smooth all the way around. I'm using my one inch belt sander to trim the part to size. And now it's pretty much exactly the same size as the external diameter of the copper tube. The next thing to do is to find the centre of the piece of brass and I'm doing this in a really stupid way. I haven't even got the line in the right place. This would not work. It would be a much better idea to fit this part in the chuck and use a centre drill to make a hole in the centre. Using a piece of scotch Bright, I'm erasing the felt tip pen marks so I can make some more in the correct place. What I need to do is measure the diameter of this part and I get it to be 3 and 1 8 of an inch. Using my felt tip pen, I put a mark in the centre, then I draw a few more lines on the piece of metal, all of which pass through the centre. In this clip, I'm using a spring-loaded centre punch to make a mark in the very centre of the work, and I got it wrong. But by re-punching at an angle, I corrected the error. So this mark is in the centre, or at least as near as it needs to be. As I mentioned earlier, I could have done this job entirely in the lathe, but not everyone has a lathe big enough to accommodate a disc of this size. In this clip, I'm committing a grievous error. This part ended up not being in the centre because I didn't use a centre drill and the twist drill wandered about. And I'm doing it on purpose. I drilled the hole, tapping size for quarter by 40, threaded it quarter by 40 threads per inch, and screwed in a quarter by 40 boiler plug. I gripped the boiler plug tightly in the chuck jaws and then, using a centre drill, I drilled the other end quite deeply. As you can see in this clip, the hole is not exactly in the centre of the piece of brass. To hold the part securely in place while I machine it, I'm using a live centre. Although initially the part wandered about, it stopped doing that owing to the pressure of the cutting tool as I machined the edge. I cleaned up the edges using a file. This was not just to smooth it off, it was to form a channel into which the solder could flow once it's fitted into the copper tube. I need this to be a strong joint, and the part is not a really tight push fit in the copper tube. This is intentional. It's a snug fit. It holds the copper tube in place without any support from me. The next part of the job is to remove the boiler plug and put it back in my box of boiler plugs. Just in case you're wondering, this piece of brass is 3mm thick. And here's a close-up of the modified boiler plug, which is now in the box. I will be able to use this again for a similar job. All I need to do is tap this part gently in place into the copper tube. But before I do that, there are some more things that I need to do. First of all, clean up the copper tube. To do this, I'm using a piece of medium-grade emery cloth. I turn the tube around in the chuck to clean up the other end. 
This will be fine for the moment. It's not too badly scratched because I'm not going to paint this. I'm going to polish it. I've made a felt tip pen mark on the tank where I'm going to drill a 3 8 of an inch diameter hole. And then, using a flapper wheel, I'm cleaning around the inside edge at this end. And I'm also deburring the hole at the same time. I don't really need to do this next part. I'm using a 3 8 reamer to make sure that the hole is 3 8 And now, once again, I'm using the flapper wheel to clean up the outside edge of the hole. For soldering operations, it is essential that all the parts are very clean. In this clip I fitted the commercial boiler bush in place into the tank and there is just enough room to fit the base. Now I need to thoroughly clean the brass base and fit it finally in place. I'm using a mahogany block for this to make sure that it's perfectly level and indeed it is. I'm now in the outer part of the workshop and I'm going to apply quite a lot of this Friar Lux paint to the inside of the tank. This Friar Lux paint is finely ground soft solder mixed with flux. Now I need to warm things up. I'm just using the standard blowtorch head. I don't need to use a really big one. I don't want to cremate the part. It is only soft solder. Not to be confused with silver soldering, which needs a much higher temperature. As you can clearly see, I'm also adding some electrical solder around the inside to build up a fillet. I'd better mention that once again the operation is running at four times normal speed. Once I'd finished the soft soldering, I used a paintbrush with some water to clean up the flux residue from the solder which completely covers the bottom of the tank. The water cools the tank and the solder doesn't flow, but eventually everything's fine and I'll leave the part to cool. Here are a few shots of the inside of the tank. As you can see, the entire bottom part of the tank is covered in solder and have a look here. You will notice that there's a fillet of solder around the outside edge. This is good, it's a very strong joint. Once the tank had thoroughly cooled, I cleaned it first on the polishing spindle and here I'm finishing off the job using some Brasso wadding. The top part of the tank is now complete. Next I need to make the lower part of the tank which will need a couple of holes drilling in it, one for a drain and one to feed the hand pump. I also need to machine the mounting column and that will also be in the next episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.